uh, cross-platform application development framework. Uh, I started contributing to Uno platform about four years ago uh, when it was uh, open sourced. And I contributed as, uh, contributed as an open source contributor for a while and uh, then became uh, like a more stable part of the core team that develops the platform itself. So uh, this will be a kind of introduction to see what Uno platform can do and how it can help you build applications that run everywhere. So I will first start with, oh, let's get this away, okay. So I will start with the problem itself where you want to build applications that run everywhere on all platforms. And you have multiple platforms that users actually use. So there is Windows, there is Mac OS, uh, all Apple users have also iOS devices like iPhones and iPads. Uh, people have Androids and some of them have Linuxes on their PCs. And there are also many people who are using the web. So to reach all of these people, you would need to build multiple different applications. And for each of those platforms, you need a specific way of coding. So for Windows, you're building C Sharp, XAML applications. On macOS, you would be building AppKit-based Swift applications. On Linux, you would be building whatever on Linux is. Uh, on iOS, you would, build, you would be building in uh, uh, iOS uh, Swift and Swift UI. In Android, you would be building in Kotlin and AXML. And in the web side of things, you would be building in some uh, crazy JavaScript framework and uh, using HTML and CSS to style it all. So it's a wide range of technologies and not a single developer can cover them all. So what can we do to improve upon that? The first step would be to share some code. And of course, people have been successful with this by sharing code with JavaScript, even with C Sharp. You can use Xamarin Forms or uh, as it's gonna be called in the future, MAUI, to share both business logic and UI layer of the application. Uh, but the problem is, for example, with MAUI is that you can reach mobile users and desktop users, but you cannot reach the, uh, the browsers. Uh, that means uh, Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and so on. So if you need to reach website users as well, you would have to build a separate application using Blazor or something like that. So the solution would be, even better solution would be to have a single platform that can cover all the needs uh, of you as a developer and all the targets uh, that you want to support. And in this case, the solution comes in the form of having one single code base written in C Sharp as the ubiquitous .NET language and XAML as the UI layer language. Uh, if you have built Windows applications before, uh, which is Windows Presentation Foundation, Universal Windows Platform, or now WinUI, you definitely know XAML as the language uh, that's used in Microsoft technologies to build UIs. And Xamarin Forms also has XAML code, even though the XAML in Xamarin Forms is kind of a different and kind of a simplified version of XAML because they're rendering their user controls using native controls underneath. So for example, a button in, Andro uh, in Android is a Android widget button. On iOS, it's UI button. And on Windows, it's a XAML button. So uh, this means that you have like, your UI is composed of a single common denominator between all of those platforms. And to introduce some company branding or styling and improving the looks of the application, you need to reach into those native APIs which might not be uh, the ideal solution for you. So the solution, uh, the even better solution, comes in the form of Uno Platform, which is a pixel perfect solution that allows you to completely style your application to look exactly the same on all targets. And you do that by writing a single code base that you just take and compile on all targets and it works. Uh, the goal of Uno Platform is that you can write uh, your application as a Windows application, use your existing skills, so just uh, use the same APIs that you can find on Windows, and then compile it against Uno platform to reach 
Android, iOS, WebAssembly, Linux, and macOS. Uh, the trick Uno Platform uses is that its namespaces are exactly the same as the UI namespaces, which is the Windows UI library. So as you can see on, on the slide, uh, in WinUI, you can find a button in the namespace Microsoft UI XAML controls button. And in Uno platform, we have it exactly in the same place. So Microsoft UI XAML controls button, the same for border, and the same for all the other controls and APIs that uh, are in, in, in WinUI. So when you take your code base that's written for Windows and compile it, uh, using Uno platform for Android, iOS, macOS, WebAssembly, and Linux, it will just work without any code changes because the surface of the API is exactly the same. And in ideal situation, your application will just work without any code changes. As for the UI, uh, the UI layer is rendered using native rendering capabilities of each of the platforms. So on Windows, they're just using Windows APIs. There is no Uno platform involved there. It's just running against directly against the metal. Uh, but on the other platforms, we're using the rendering capabilities on that platform. So for example, iOS is using uh, core graphics to render the Chrome of controls or uh, backgrounds on, or borders and so on. Uh, on, uh, on macOS, we're using AppKit and core graphics to do the same. On Android, it's using Android views and the native rendering capabilities on Android. On the web, it's using HTML and CSS. And on Linux, that's the special one, we are using Skia Sharp to render the UI. Uh, but you as a developer are only knowing about the XAML code. You just write the XAML code and the rest is handled for you by Uno platform. And without further ado, I will show you a first example of uh, a Uno platform application action. So I will open Visual Studio. And the first step that you need to do as a Uno platform developer is to actually install a extension into Visual Studio. Uh, this extension gives you access to Uno platform solution templates, which is very helpful as it gives you a starting point to develop applications without having to manually set up all the dependencies and related things. So I will search for Uno platform. And you can see that uh, there is Uno platform solution templates. Uh, this extension is available for both Visual Studio 2022 as well as uh, 2019. Uh, but of course, 2022 is a better choice because it supports more features and uh, the new .NET 6 templates. So when you install it, you will find a new set of templates inside of your new project dialog. And I'm not sure if you can see it. There are uh, four different templates that are pre-installed. First one is multi-platform app uh, with Xamarin. Then there is a uh, .NET 6 template uh, this multi-platform application .NET 6. And the difference between these two is that the Xamarin one is the one that's stable. Uh, the .NET 6 one is uh, for the future support of .NET 6 uh, mobile, which is Android iOS and .NET 6 version of WinUI. But it's not stable enough, so I don't recommend you to use it. Um, the reason is that Microsoft is changing the underly underlying structure and infrastructure below uh, Xamarin, or I mean uh, .NET 6 Mobile, uh, and it's still not stable, and they are changing it with each release of Visual Studio, and we as Uno Platform are depending on that same infrastructure, so we need to catch up with each release and update our templates to actually work with, uh, with what they are doing. So. Until MAUI uh, is stably released, which hopefully should be uh, this year at build, uh, I recommend you to start with the Xamarin template, which is more stable and more reliable. And uh, next up, there is also cross-platform UI test library, which allows you to create a project that allows you to test your application using UI tests. 
and that allows you to build cross-platform tests that run on Android, iOS, and WebAssembly. So you can have your application fully UI tested and verify that everything works and you don't bring any regressions when you do changes in the future. We actually use this very extensively as part of our code base. So with each, uh, each commit to master, we run a very extensive set of uh, UI tests as well as runtime tests that verify that we didn't break anything. And that's very important because it saved us a million times already when we introduced a new feature, which accidentally broke something else in the platform and that was not really pleasant. So uh, UI tests are really great. Um, and finally, uh, there is also multi-platform library and this template allows you to build reusable template, uh, reusable libraries for UNO platform applications. So if you build something that you want to reuse across multiple different projects, you can put it in this multi-platform library and then reference it from multiple different places or publish it on Nugget and then download it and use it. Right, so I will open, I will create a sample application in this multi-platform app uh, template. I will call it hello and DC. And I'm not sure if I already created that project. No, I didn't, that's good. So I will wait for it to load. Um, in the background, it's creating a set of projects. And that means uh, one, uh, that there is one project for each, temp each platform that we support. So it takes a while as well as the package restore, which takes a while because it's downloading a lot of packages in the background. But luckily I have already downloaded those as I know that the Wi-Fi is not really good here. So the solution is created and I will expand this a little bit so it's visible. The solution consists of a single shared project which is the place where you as a developer will spend absolute most of your time. Uh, it contains all the shared code that is then cross compiled in all the platforms that you support. So there are some assets, uh, which could be some images or shared icons and so on. There are this uh, folder for strings where you can put in a resource localization. So some strings, if you want to support multiple languages, and there is AppZaml, which has a code behind file of AppZaml CS. And this is the application bootstrapping code, which handles all the application lifecycle. So let me make this smaller. So this handles the application lifecycle and basically handles the navigation to the main page of the application and so on. So it's a kind of a bootstrapping uh, overall. And finally, there is main page, which is the main page of the application in Uno platform. The UI is, uh, consists of pages, which you then navigate through and you can navigate from one page to another and create sort of a um, stack based navigation uh, between pages. So this is uh, our, our simple hello world page which I will show you in action in a few moments, but I will first go here into the platforms folder. And in there, you can see that there are multiple different projects and each project handles a separate platform. So here is Android project, here's iOS project, macOS project, GTK project, which is um, another kind of cross-platform solution that allows you to build applications for Windows and Linux as well. So this project can run on Linux. There is Tizen, which is kind of experimental. So I will, be not sure, I will not be showing that, but it allows you to run Uno platform applications on devices like Bridge and uh, your watch. Uh, there is WPF. Uh, there are actually two projects, but the important one is the WPF host which is a WPF application, and it allows you to deploy this application to older versions of Windows, which is Windows 7, Windows 8, and Windows 8.1, and uh, there is no Windows 9. 
So <laughs> basically, this is for the older, older, older versions of Windows. There is UWP project, which handles Windows 10 and Windows 11. And finally, WebAssembly, which is the kind of the most interesting one, which allows you to deploy your application to the web. So I will launch the UWP project, which is the Windows 10 and 11. And if we're lucky, it should compile quite, uh, quite quickly. And I will put it side by side with Visual Studio so we can see what's going on. So here's a Hello World application running in Windows version of the application. And important thing to note here is that this is just a Windows application. There is nothing from Uno platform in this. Uh, it's just plain Windows. But I actually can use the tooling that's in Visual Studio to improve the UI a little bit. So let me I'll open this as a separate window and make this smaller. So I will add some more interesting UI here. So I will add stack panel, make some padding here, and then underneath this I will put a slider. Uh, I will name this slider my slider. So this is a sliding control that allows you to select a value like this. And now I will create a button that will display the value of the slider using data binding. So I will add a content, add a binding, and to element name my slider, path value. So now you should be able to see, I will actually make it bigger like this. You can see that when I slide the slider, the value on the button is changing in real time. So that's a very simple interactive application. Let me add something more here. I will add a, a control called checkbox, which allows you to check if something is good or not. Good. So I click here, it's checked and I can uncheck and you can even make it freeway. So uh, there is an indeterminate state. And let me add also a progress bar, which is a like a progress indicator. And I can also bind that to that slider. So like this value, and we should be able to see that the slide, the progress bar is also changing its value based on what I do with the slider. So this is a very simple Windows application, nothing too special, but we can take this application now with the same source code and deploy it to all the other platforms. So I will start with Android, select it and run it on the emulator. And here we have, this is just old application. Let's wait for it to compile. In the meantime, before it's compiled, I will show you that in the platform specific projects, there is not much to actually see. Uh, for example, here in the Android project, you have just uh, an assets folder for assets, you have resources for icons, and there is a main class for the main application uh, bootstrapping and main activity, which actually launches the application activity of Uno platform. So there is nothing interesting there. And you as a developer, most of the time will not even have to touch this project and you will just write in that shared code here. And the same thing goes for all the other platforms. So if I open here, you can see there's just a program class that starts the GTK host for Uno platform. And the same thing uh, in iOS, for example, there is just main class that launches the application itself. So it's very simple and nothing uh, complex. If you're then publishing this application, you will probably go into these projects to actually replace the icons for the application to, uh, to make your um, application use your company branding. But 
uh, that should be the, the extent of your changes in these projects. So when the application is launched, you should be able to see the same UI now running on Android. So you can see it's basically the same thing. We can slide the slider, the value is changing. We can check the checkbox and it behaves the same as on Windows. And of course, if you rotate the tablet, you will get a real layout and the application now is in a vertical, vertical orientation and just works. All right. One more thing I want to show is that when you go into this notification area and click on dark theme, and the whole system and the application automatically changes its theme to be dark. And that's coming out of the box in Uno platform. So you as a developer don't have to restyle your application or care about this because all the controls that are built in are automatically adaptive to dark theme and light theme. And that's the same thing on Android and all the other platforms. Okay, let me close this. And I will go to, uh, actually I will skip iOS and macOS because I don't have a Mac here and you need a Mac to actually build and deploy your application uh, on those platforms. So I will skip those two and go right into GTK. And I will launch the application on GTK. We should be able to see the same UI, but now running as a GTK application on Windows. So it's the same UI, same behavior. The cool thing is that you can take the same application and run it on Linux. So you can take the compiled version, bring it to Linux, run.net run, and it will just run on Linux without any changes. And uh, if you have WSN FCL installed, which I have, but it's broken, then you can actually launch the application on WSL and have it running as a Ubuntu application right on your desktop. All right, so I will go forward with WPF. This platform is for the older versions of Windows. So there is not, not much interesting there, but I will just launch it to prove that it works. Uh, this is kind of interesting because Microsoft has its own WinUI library, which does work on Windows 11 and Windows 10, but it does not work on older versions of Windows. So this way, you can actually build modern Windows applications that also run on the older versions of Windows, which is kind of important because many companies are still running these older versions of Windows and cannot easily upgrade. So let's see, uh, here's the main window. And again, the application behaves the same and the behavior overall is uh, very similar to UWP on Windows 10. And finally, we get to the most interesting target, which is WebAssembly. WebAssembly is a very fresh, uh, fresh member of the web development uh, toolkit, which allows you to build non-JavaScript applications and run them on the client of the uh, in the browser. So here's the same application running in the browser, and it's a pure.NET and XAML application. So if I do F5, you can see that a lot of the familiar DLLs like system, runtime, serialization, system, .NET web client, and so on, are loaded into the browser. And the application is then executed from the client browser. So there is no network communication going on. If I slide the slider, there is no more requests. Yeah, like this, you can see that there is no requests going on and this is all running on the client, which is kind of nice because you can have this application running offline and the only time when you need to communicate with the browser is for the initial load, uh, with the server is for the initial load. And the application itself is rendered using HTML and CSS. So you can see that there is div body, there is some inner div and so on. All the XAML controls are translated into 
HTML and CSS, but you as a developer are just writing XAML code, which is great because if you don't know how to center things vertically in, in HTML and CSS, uh, we can handle that for you and you don't have to care. Of course, the, another advantage is that as we're um, generating this HTML and CSS, it can be also accessible. So we can add accessibility symbols to this uh, attributes, and as a result, your application will be uh, readable for screen readers and these accessibility tools that are needed. So that's an example of WebAssembly, and I will actually show one more thing here. In settings, if I switch my browser to dark theme, then again, the application has noticed this and switch to dark theme as well. So now it's looking more like a dark side of the web. So that's it. That's it from the basic demo of Uno platform. I will go back to the sites to uh, tell you something more about, actually, one more thing. Uh, there is Uno platform playground, which is not showing up on the slide. Ah, now it's showing up. So. There is Uno Platform Playground at plat uh, playground.platform.uno and this website is a full-blown XAML editor which allows you to play with Uno Platform without ever installing it on your local machine. And I will actually show you that in action uh, you can find this on your PC. You can go to... The, oh, that's the wrong link. So let me fix that. Playground.platform.uno and if you go to this website, you will see this zap. You don't see anything because I didn't switch from the slides. So I will end this and you should be able to see it now. Yes. So this is the Uno Playground. And on the left side is the XAML editor. And on the right side is uh, a live rendered version of that uh, XAML. So if I do some changes here, like add a button and have a content of hello and DC. It will render on the right side and there is the new button. I can change the foreground to be red here. And it's immediate, oh, sorry. <laughs> it's immediately reflected on the right side uh, as I type. And actually, if you go here into this data tab, you can provide some JSON-based data that you want, then can display on the right side. Uh, there are some snippets, uh, so I will go to the snippet of list view, which shows this quite nicely. So there is a list of um, composers, and the list view is then displaying those composers with their name, some color, and some additional description. So. The, this is a way how you can play with Uno Platform without installing it into your Visual Studio and it works pretty nicely and has quite a lot of samples so you can play with even advanced things like Tree View where you can select uh, partially or even full parts of the tree and so on. So this gives you kind of an example of how Uno Platform can work and if you like it then you can uh, commit to it by installing it into your Visual Studio. All right, so let me go back to this. Uh, I've shown some basic controls that you can use in Uno Platform, uh, but we support a lot more. There are things like tree view that you just seen, a navigation view with hierarchy where you can have uh, it's on the right side. It's like a Navigational view, uh, navigational component with hamburger menu, some items, icons, and even uh, groupings. There is color picker, which allows you to pick colors. There is info bar to give some notification to the user. There is two pane view, which is kind of useful for uh, two screen devices, like Surface Duo has two screens. So you can have uh, two different views on each side of the device. And if you then rotate it, it can relay out automatically to handle just one single screen and so on. So that's a kind of interesting control. And there is also calendar view that shows you calendar and you can pick dates and so on. The cool thing about this is that we can fully reuse what Microsoft has already built. And I can show you that in 
uh, with a full example because Microsoft has open sourced its WinUI components at uh, GitHub. So if I go to Microsoft UI XAML, we'll be able to see some of those controls like navigation view, which is kind of complex. And if you see this folder, there are some uh, C++ files, some XAML files, some header files, and so on. And we actually are able to take this exact same source code, translate it to C Sharp, and then use it in Uno platform without any changes. And that's the way how we implement new controls when Microsoft releases a new control. We take the source code, uh, look at it, copy paste it into our, uh, our sources, and then just translate it from C++ to C Sharp. So if I go here into Uno UI, and go to UI, XAML, or actually no, there is a different folder. There is a Microsoft UI, XAML controls, and I go to navigation view. You'll be able to see that this is a very similar kind of a layout of files that we just seen in the Microsoft repository. And if I go to navigation view CS, it's basically the same thing that they have just translated to C-sharp with some minor adjustments so that it works because they have different uh, memory management and, and things like this. But overall, the source code is the same. So when Microsoft has, uh, makes some changes to their source code, we can just port the same commit to our, uh, our platform and it just works. And we know that we didn't break anything because we are also able to port their unit tests and UI tests. So if, you, if I browse here, uh, we have navigation view tests. Tests. And uh, those tests, if I find it actually, this is not the right one. Uh, maybe, so this is the one. These are the exact same unit tests that Microsoft is using in their uh, repository so we know that we have the same coverage and all the features from navigation view are working in Uno platform and we can verify it with each build automatically so that's quite helpful and as a result uh, we have a stable platform that can evolve alongside with Microsoft's okay let's go back to slides and I will uh, mention something about theming and styling because as you have seen, the application as I built it, did look the same on all platforms, on Windows, Android, iOS, well, we didn't see iOS, but it would look the same on iOS, uh, on WebAssembly and GTK on, and WPF, all those platforms look the same. And that can be advantages because you may want to introduce some company branding and in that case, having the same look of controls everywhere is helpful. But you can also make your application look different on each platform. And you can do that using styling and theming. Uno platform by default provides you with the fluent styles, but you can install additional templates, uh, which are based on material design and Cupertino design. So your application can look like an Android application or like an iOS application. And I will actually show you how it looks in action, but this is just uh, an example of how those controls can be rendered. Uno platform also provides you with animation support, so you can make your application more fluent and more fluid, uh, and that actually helps the user experience a lot when things like loading are animated because it feels faster for the user. And finally, Uno platform gives you all the other UI features, which I haven't shown like accessibility. So you can make sure that your application is readable for screen readers. You can use adaptive triggers to make sure your application looks well on small devices, even on large devices, um, kind of a responsive design sort of thing. There is also conditional XAML, which allows you to make sure that some content is displayed only on some platforms. So if you had a native control like mapping control on Android, you could display it only on Android, 
and work with it like a native control. And uh, I think I mentioned everything. Localization, yes, localization is supported also across all the platforms. Uh, and it's quite easy, you just add additional languages and the platform itself handles everything else. So when you add check support, it will just show you check strings where your, when your application is set to be in a check language. So that's from the basic UI coverage. And I will show this to you in a demo application, which you can find on Galeri dot platform dot uno but you can actually even download it on your uh, mobile device it's on the play store and the uh, app store on ios and this application uh, shows kind of a overall coverage of all the controls that uno platform gives you so you can see that for example here's an example of button uh, and how it looks on material design so if i click you can see that uh, kind of ripple effect that you know from Android. I'm um, not sure if it's not rendering properly on the on the screen, but it's rendering correctly here, so just ignore the glitches. Uh, if I switch to Fluent, now the application uh, or the button looks more like a Windows 11 button, so it has the a small gradient on the border. There is Cupertino design, where it looks like an iOS application, so the buttons have no border and look like a text box, which is clickable. And there are other controls like checkboxes, radio buttons, and all of that is styled differently for each of those themes. And there are additional samples like uh, maybe I would go the info bar, which gives you like a notification uh, bar for the user, or there is fab, which is the kind of a button that you know from Android applications where you have it in the bottom right corner and you click it and it creates a new item or new, new to do and uh, this sort of thing. So all these controls you can use on all platforms. You just include them in your application and they compile and work the same way everywhere. One more thing I will show is the acrylic which is a kind of brush that you can use to blur the behind of a control. And if you're running your application on macOS, you can actually make this brush blur the behind of the window itself. So you can have partially see-through window on macOS, which is pretty nice. And it matches the experience that you can find on Windows, where you have the mica material, which has also this see-through ability. Right, so I will go back to the slides and tell you something about non-UI APIs. Because Uno platform is not only about the UI, which is a common misconception that Uno is only about the UI controls that you can use, but for the non-UI APIs, you have to use some separate library or implement it yourself, yourself natively. So Uno provides you not only those UI controls, but also these uh, various sensor classes and uh, APIs like speech recognizer that allows you to recognize speech, a launcher that allows you to launch uh, different URLs. There is uh, orientation sensor that allows you to see if your, uh, your device is rotated in some way and many, many other more uh, that are available. And all of these APIs again are coming from Windows. So if you need documentation, you just go to Microsoft documentation, search for accelerometer, copy their code snippet and use it in Uno platform and it should work without any changes. This allows us to actually move the responsibility for, for documentation on Microsoft because they should uh, keep their stuff documented. And we can only document the specific things that are different in Uno platform. And that's quite useful and helps even the users. And for the non-UI APIs, I will again show you a sample that you can find on cut.ly slash APIs. So this, uh, this URL. And it leads to uh, this Azure hosted website that I built. 
as an example of those non-UI APIs. One of the very important ones is network information, which allows you to check if you're connected or not. So if I click check connectivity, you can see that I'm connected to the internet. So I can, for example, do some API requests to a server and get some results. And, but if I simulate that I'm not connected, which I can do in the developer tools, the application will immediately notice that and switch to offline mode. So I can, for example, disable some UI elements to indicate to the user that they cannot actually perform some operations in the application. Right, so next one, geolocator allows me to get current GPS coordinates. So if I click, I will get my current GPS coordinates. Uh, there is accelerometer, which allows you to read accelerometer events. So if I move this PC, you can see that the values are changing as I'm moving the PC around. And this works again on all mobile devices. So if you launch this on a mobile device, you will see those readings happening in real time. Uh, there is vibration, which you can try out on your mobile device. So if you click this button, your mobile device will vibrate. And there is speech recognizer, which sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. So let's see. Hello world. So it recognizes speech and translates it into text. And there is also MIDI, which is my personal favorite, uh, not only because I built it, but uh, also because it's a very cool example of how far can the web APIs go. So in this uh, case, if I had a digital piano connected to this PC, I would be able to play these notes on the digital piano and then the sound would be coming out of that MIDI device. And the same way, if I was playing something on the digital piano, the sound could be coming from the PC. So that's uh, very cool. And it's actually interesting because we as Uno platform have used the Windows APIs to build this MIDI support. This, these Windows APIs are underneath in Uno platform calling JavaScript web MIDI APIs which in turn are calling the browser's MIDI support, which in turn is calling Windows APIs, which are the same APIs that we actually built in Uno platform. So uh, as a result, there is like a full circle where this goes to a external MIDI device, which then plays the notes, which is very cool and uh, shows what uh, today's browsers can actually do. Yes, it works on all platforms, like the same source code, you just write MIDI output from ID Async and like basically the snippet and it works everywhere without any platform specifics, which is uh, kind of cool. So uh, I definitely encourage you if you have a digital piano to try this out because it's, it's kind of fun. And uh, I have one more example here, it's this file system APIs and it, this is using the file system APIs that were added as a draft proposal into V3C. Uh, and this allows you to actually write to local file system of the user. So if uh, the user clicks here, selects a folder like pictures, it asks him to give permission to the uh, site to access that uh, folder. So I allow it and you can see that it listed files that I have on my local machine in that folder. So if I go to pictures, we should be able to see the exact same list of files. If my hard drive is working, so they are the same files there. And if I create a file using new, I'll say hello NDC and refresh the list, you can see there is hello NDC text now. And I can actually even write to that file so I can say hello NDC and I can click write to file. It asks me to give permission. And if I do that, it actually did output that text into that file. So if I open it, you can see hello NDC. So this is very cool because it allows you to build 
full-blown editors that are running in the browser and accessing the local file system of the user, which is something that opens up a lot of scenarios which before were not possible because you could only upload and download files. So you can try this out on that uh, cut.ly website and I will move forward um, quickly through some additional demos and examples. So we provide a library called Uno Extensions, which gives you many extensions like localization support, logging support, uh, dependence injection, and so on. Uh, we have documentation for this, so you can try it out uh, in your application and it makes your development experience a little bit easier. So I encourage you to try it. There is also Uno Toolkit, uh, which gives you access to some additional uh, some additional controls that are not part of the classic Windows controls uh, surface. And there is also external, uh, external libraries like infragistics controls, which are charting controls and uh, data grid and so on. There is also Sync Fusion, which gives you some charting controls in, uh, on all platforms. So if the animation works, yeah, it works. So it can show charts like this and render values and so on. And I'll actually show you one more thing uh, here on NuGet, because most of you probably know NuGet, it's the package uh, provider for .NET. So if I search for a package uh, like JSON, you can see that on the right side there is open in Nugget Package Explorer. And if I click it, it actually loads a Uno platform application that analyzes that package or unzips it and shows you the contents and some metadata information about that package. So there are things like publisher, health of the package. There are, you can open files in there. So like uh, this is the package icon, license contents, and you can browse the DLLs and the XML files and so on. So this is quite nice because it's a very useful developer tool for any .NET developer and it's available directly from the .NET org site. So that's a quick demo of some kind of a more advanced Uno platform application. And I will just show you one more thing, which is kind of a new feature that we announced uh, during UNOConf 2021. Yeah, 21. <laughs> so it was in uh, December. Uh, we added support for Uno platform in Figma, where you can actually design your applications and then export them from Figma directly uh, to XAML. So I'll open this and you can see this is some, some kind of example sample application and if you install uno platform in there you will find uno platform plugin here which shows up as a separate window in figma and this is actually a WebAssembly application that's loaded in this pop-up and it allows you to select a part of ui and then display that UI as a fully functional uh, WebAssembly view. So this is a interactive WebAssembly surface. So I can type something here and show the password and so on. So it's kind of interactive. And when you're satisfied with what you see, you can click on the XAML and then just copy this code and paste it into your application and just use it without having to make any additional changes. So this is a great thing for designers where they can design the application and they just, just export this to XAML code, which the developer can then use and to build the application forward. So this is available as a preview and you can download it on the Uno platform website as a plugin to Figma. Right. So that's it from this example. And I will just show you one more thing uh, that Uno Platform really does run everywhere. And this example is actually Uno Platform running in the browser on a Tesla 
car. So you can actually run Uno platform applications everywhere where browsers are. And this is kind of cool because you could use the geolocator API and then build some kind of navigational uh, application for Tesla, which has otherwise a closed API surface. And finally, a small sneak preview, because that's uh, something I uh, worked on in uh, recent weeks, is multi-window support. So Uno Platform will soon be able to open secondary windows of the application, and that's for all platforms, including iOS, macOS, Android, uh, and even Windows. WebAssembly, not yet. <laughs> that's, that's a problematic, because we have separate windows, so it's kind of complicated to uh, support this scenario, but all the other platforms will be supported and it's going to be pretty cool. Actually, there is also a way to put a Uno platform component as part as a ZAML island into an existing WPF application. So you could have a WPF application which is running some WPF content and next to it is Uno platform rendering some modern UI. So the possibilities are endless and it's all possible thanks to the fact that we can reuse most of the code from Microsoft in Uno platform. So uh, finally, how you can get started, you can go to platform.uno to get some uh, instructions or uh, getting started uh, tutorials. You can talk to us on Discord or on GitHub and send any feedback, issues, or even contribute. We have some uh, contribution guides where you can get started making your first pull request and trying out to actually help us improve and extend our platform. Uh, as part of this talk, you can go to platform.uno slash price draw, where you can get, uh, get into a draw to win one of those Introduction to Uno Platform courses on Udemy. And that's it from my talk. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them and give you some help. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I understand. So Uno Platform is an open source project, but it's backed by a company that is building applications using Uno Platform. So Inventive, which is the parent company of Uno Platform, was building using Uno long before it was open sourced, but they open sourced it based on the suggestion of uh, Scott Hanselman actually. So he suggested it should be open source and they did just that and open source it on build. And, but since then, they moved to a separate company, and this company is now running Uno Platform and also offering professional support for Uno Platform. So there are already several big companies that are betting on Uno Platform and getting first party immediate support for their issues and getting uh, like uh, priority help with their problems. So this way it's financed. So, so partly from the parent company, which is building applications on top of Uno platform, and partly from these uh, professional supports for bigger companies that can afford it and it helps them uh, move forward. Uh, for example, there is a construction site uh, project management company called Kawa, which builds uh, a WebAssembly based Uno platform uh, project management system. And they are actually on the latest cutting edge because in previous weeks they upgraded their application to .NET 7. So they are already on the cutting edge testing on the preview versions of WebAssembly and so on. So very cool. And yeah, this way it kind of works. I think uh, it should survive a long time based on this. And the number of companies that are betting on Uno and getting the professional support is growing. So I don't see any reason why we should stop. <laughs> Yes, yes, yep. uh, like it's the same uh, styling as in normal XAML. So if you search for XAML styles, uh, UWP, 
So you can follow the same documentation as in UWP or WinUI, and you can define your own styles and change the template of the button to be anything you want. You're not limited by anything. It's just that we provide some default styles and you can override them anytime you want. Uh, not WPF, because WPF has a different uh, XAML dialect than, than WinUI. Those are the two different things. WinUI is the modern version of XAML uh, and has a little bit simpler syntax as compared to WPF, which has like multi-binding and things like this. This we don't support. We support only what's in UWP or WinUI. That one is not supported because it's not in WinUI. If Microsoft adds multi-binding into WinUI in future versions, we will also be able to add it because we have the same surface. But for now, they don't support it and we cannot support it because we need to be on par with their API surface, basically. But otherwise, you can do all the things like visual states, animations, adaptive triggers, all of this is supported and it will work just the same way as on Windows. Like comparison, yeah. uh, and in terms of what uh, speed or uh, in terms of development. So uh, I think the Uno platform's development cycle is most similar to Xamarin Forms because it's also .NET based. So uh, if, if you compare it to Flutter. I haven't used Flutter personally because it's a different language and I am used to .NET environment. So if you prefer other languages, maybe you would like Flutter more. But if you're a .NET developer, then I think Uno platform will be easier for you to understand and use because it's using C Sharp, it's using XAML, and it's using the technologies that have been here for a long time in the Microsoft space. So that I think is the main difference. The preference of the ecosystem that you want to work with is the main decision factor in which platform you will choose. Yeah, is that enough or you want some? Yeah, okay. Any other questions? All right, so that's it. Thank you very much.